Okay, so the thing about this Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey story is that it is never going away. You know why? Because they're a power couple and there's a long history of celebrity matchups that just take all our attention. Today on the podcast, you're going to hear why we're so fascinated by power couples. I'm Alameen Abdul Mahmoud and you're listening to a special edition of Commotion. Hey! We're recording this live at Buddies and Bad Times Theater in downtown Toronto. What's up, everybody? I'm so excited to do this with me. Alongside this incredible audience, we got some of our favorite culture writers in the house. Kathleen newman Bermang is here. Nico Stratus is here. Rad Time and Play is here. What's up, everyone? What's good? What up? Hi, Hi. I'm so excited to be here. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hey. Guys... We're talking about power couples, but can I just say, like, you guys are a power trio to me. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, this nice. is, these are my people. I'm so excited that you're here. A power thruple. A power yeah. thruple. That's, I call top. Is that a top and a power thruple? I can't couple? see you. I'm going to move over. <laughs> Hi, guys. We, you we don't... call top. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I don't know. We've sat down for four seconds, and <laughs> Kathleen is like, I call top. I love this. This is great energy to get started. All right. I can't wait to get into all of this. Let's get it started with perhaps a bit of this. Look for me, young B, cruising down the west side highway, doing what we like to do, I wait, eyes behind shades, this necklace the reason all of my days been blind days, but today I got my barrowist girl with me, I'm mashing the gas, she's grabbing the wheel, it's trippy how hard she rides with me, the new Bobby and Whitney, only time we don't speak is doing sex in the city, she gets carry fever, but soon as the show. What I love about this is that the audience is like, I don't know that song. I've never heard it in my life. And Kathleen is sitting here singing every single word. That's, yes, I am. that's from 2002. That's Bonnie and Clyde, Jay-Z featuring Beyonce. Kathleen, why is it that when we start talking about power couples, the first thing that comes to mind is Beyonce and Jay? What is that? Um, because they're Beyonce and Jay-Z. I mean, they're two of the most famous people in the world, of course. But I think it's not just that they're two incredibly famous people that came together. So there's other really famous couples, like an Ava Mendez and Ryan Gosling, right? That's a famous couple. Yeah. I don't think they really go into the category of power couple like Beyonce and Jay-Z because they do not use their coupledom for their work, for professional gain in the same way that Beyonce and Jay-Z do. A little closer to the mic. But I think at the beginning of Beyonce's solo career, there's no mistaking that she definitely gained something from being with Jay-Z. And now, Jay-Z, as a 50-year-old man in hip-hop, he has relevance that he would not have uh, because he is Beyonce's husband. He definitely has, both of them, have capitalized on their coupledom. They've written songs, Lemonade, Beyonce's most seminal piece of work clearly a genius in music yeah. is because of that relationship. You know, she wrote about Jay cheating on her. All of that. Yeah, I was going to say, like, she didn't write positively about the relationship. No, but I think that they have definitely taken their personal life, which I think is real, yeah. that marriage and the tumultuousness of it, and they've used it for their professional gain. They've gone on tour together. I've seen them on tour together. They have done all of that and solidified themselves as the blueprint for making money off of being a power couple. Can I just say, I was at that tour also, and, like, no one was there for Jay. Like, I don't want to be rude <laughs> exactly. about it. But exactly. every time that Jay-Z was doing some of his solo stuff, like, the most of the crowd was like, I guess here comes Jay-Z. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Let him have his moment. This is nice. Uh, Rad, what about you? When What would you say makes the ultimate power couple? Well, look, I mean, I don't disagree with Kathleen that Jay and Beyonce are a power couple. And to add to what she was talking about, like, I mean, for me, yeah. you're only powerful to me. You're only of interest to me. It depend if you are making art together. And when she talks about lemonade specifically, like they are making themselves vulnerable. They're making their relationship vulnerable mm -hmm. in that art. And that's what I that's when I care, right? And so the only other couple that I could think of that didn't have the longevity of Jay-Z and Beyonce, but are endlessly fascinating to me is Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Wow. Oh, throwback. Wow. Throwback. And, no, I mean, hear me out. First of yeah. all, if you want to talk about a couple who went and made a trilogy about their relationship, they meet on Days of Thunder, they romanticize their relationship on Far and Away, and then comes Eyes Wide Shut. The most romantic movie of all well, time, I obviously. <laughs> I, I, think about how many power couples do you know will expose themselves now? I mean, they are making love on camera. They're getting yeah. naked for Stanley Kubrick. They made that movie. They took 400 days to make this movie that really 
exposes a lot of themselves, right? Whether yeah. they, you know that they are they are putting like pouring part of themselves or pouring some projection of their public persona onto this story, this movie where Tom Cruise is playing a pretty face guy who comes crumbling when he realizes that he is not the center of the universe to his wife. Right. And that, yeah. the character he plays is like, all of a sudden she has a fantasy about someone else and everything comes crumbling down. He goes off on this odyssey that ends up in a, where he ends up in a sex club. Like, like did, for a couple, for a power couple to put themselves out there like that, that is, that is just, they, they won the game to me. Kathleen, you know what I just learned is that Rad has not seen Geely starring Jennifer Lopez <laughs> and Ben Affleck. <laughs> That's like that's what I heard. That's all I heard. Everything I just said is my man has not seen Geely from 2003. He knows how to get at me. (laughs) Big movie. How dare you? Listen, but you, Kathleen, you already know that. Really, I just want to talk about Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez like all the time. Uh, But I think we also have to zoom out a little bit here and talk about what it is that gets us so invested in power couples as an idea. Why do we care about these, but but these sort of fixations? Well, I think Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez is a great example because I do not care about Ben Affleck on his own. You know how I feel about that man. I think he just gets by on doing the bare minimum in his personal life, like many a straight white man. A clap Um, for that? (laughs) (laughs) Finally, I won them over. Unbelievable. (laughs) But I think that I love Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez together because they are good for gossip. And they have this like fairy tale story. And that I think is why we care so much about power couples. We want to believe in happily ever afters and happy endings. Yeah. And I think that's what we project onto these celebrity couples. And so this storyline of, you know, these two people who had their one that got away in Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, and then they come back together 20 years later, and now they're living happily ever after. We want to buy into that story. And then the other thing is, we love to be judgy. We love to be (laughs) judgy-ass bitches, truly. And I think it's really easy to judge famous celebrity couples. And when you, you know, go home at the end of the night after a dinner party with your partner, you're gossiping about the other couples there. (laughs) And this is what we get to do on a, like, a magnified level. I'm never going to a party with you, ever. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Are we just lying up here? Of course you are. Of course. (laughs) Right, Nico, there's something to that, though. The idea that we judge these couples and the, that's part of the excitement. Like when Timothy Sh- Shamamame, what's his name? Sh- Chalamet. Chalamet. I know How his dare name. You. <laughs> when Timothy and Kylie were announced as a couple, it was like very comfortable for people to just kind of sit back and go, them? I don't see it. There's something about these power couples that sort of attracts us to go, oh, I'm invested in this as a story. I want to read it as a story. And then you get a chance to kind of sit in the judge's chair and go, no, they will break up in six months or whatever, you know? Three months. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what is that? What is that muscle that makes us go, I'm invested in this, even if it means waiting and rooting for their downfall? I mean, it's like the part of high school that we kind of never lose, regardless of how old you are, is like looking at other people and being like, eh, there's something, something's going on here, and I'm going to pick it apart and talk about it nonstop. Uh, <laughs> this is a thing that never goes away. I'm 41. I still do it all the time. Yeah. Uh, and, but it's, it is this thing of like, you're sort of like, a lot of it I feel like is, is always sort of processing the world around you through these famous people because they're just like, they're sponges because you will never meet or interact or have to like, you'll never be at like an awkward dinner where it's like, right, I tweeted about you 37 times in an afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're like now I'm asking you like can you pass the, the salt it's right there can you can you pass it I'm sorry I talked shit about you for an entire afternoon <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I sort of feel like it's that you can you can put a lot onto these couples and you don't really ha- ever have to worry about it it's like fan fiction that's moving throughout the world mm-hmm. you know you can sort of like they're, they're paper dolls you can dress up throwing so many analogies out here but you can <laughs> you can move them around the world right and you can sort of you can imagine what their lives are like you can imagine what their futures and it's easier often than dealing with what is my own future what is my own life? How am I moving throughout the world? What am I as a paper doll? I'm going to the paper doll one because that feels the, the most real to me. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like it feels yeah. like so much you're, you're taking the world and you're sort of putting it onto these things that aren't really real in the way that everything else, they're not real the way that all of you are real or the way that we're mostly real or whatever. You know what I yeah. mean? Like it is this otherworldly <laughs> thing that you can take all your anxieties and fears and hopes and dreams and put them onto. Well, real is a good word because I want to lean on that a little bit because people are talking about this Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey story is like, is it real? Is it not? There's something about celebrity relationships when they get announced, particularly on a scale like this, because this is crazy, right? Like it's, it's too much. You're, you're living in it all the time. 
but Heinz started a thing. They were, they were like, here's a new dressing that's called seemingly ranch. <laughs> what is that? That's chaos. Like, you can't be that famous that if you take, I don't know, if you eat your chicken with something that looks like ranch, Heinz is like, we got it. We're going to move <laughs> on this. That's nuts, right? But, but there's something that makes us sort of allergic to the story. Some people allergic to the story. I'm speaking of Kathleen and Rad here a little bit. Um, but this question is to Nico. Um, and the question, is, the question is this. Is it transactional? Is you, or how, why do we read some of these as go, we go like, mm, this feels fake and transactional to me? Like, what is that muscle? I mean, it is transactional and a lot. I mean, like Nico, tra- <laughs> look, They're Taylor Swift get married. Anyway, Taylor continue. Swift and some guy will always be transactional to me. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever, just some guy. She's trotting around. Like now, I have to know about football. <laughs> <laughs> I did not sign up for this. You know, I refuse to learn his name. It's Kevin or Terrence or Tyler or something. It doesn't matter. He's just some guy. But for a little while, just some guy is going to have a real name, and he's going to have a whole new career ahead of him. He plays plays his cards right, and like, and this can happen. And this is part of that transaction. Transactional can mean multiple things, right? Like, think about people that support you. Like, think about Noah Baumbach and Greta Gerwig. Like. There's a, a transa- power couple. They're a power couple. It's transactional, but it's different. They support each other in their work, and they're they're looking they out for each the other. They make the Barbie movie together. I think, That's or like nice. like when Karen O dated Spike Jones, same thing. Mm. It's like you're both coming up in different ways. Like Spike Jones had a little bit more profile than Karen O did. Uh, uh, Karen O from the Yeah Yeah Yeahs yeah, for people that don't know, uh, and Spike Jones, the filmmaker, not Spike Jones, the musician. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Isn't her about her? What's that? Isn't is the her movie her? Her's, her's, movie? hers about her? Yeah. yeah. Is it about Greta Gerwig? No, Sorry, it's about, about uh, Karen O. I'm I thought it was about Sofia Coppola. <laughs> it's a pastiche. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, that's a film term I know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you stuck that landing. But I think, that, I think it is transactional to a certain degree, right? Of like whether, and, and transactions are good or bad, right? Like a transaction is just a thing that happens, and a lot of people do it, right? If you're dating Tom Cruise, this is a transaction. You're helping him hide something. This is always the theory <laughs> of Tom Cruise. <laughs> Oh, he's she not went, she here, went there, ladies and gentlemen. Can she I just say there. the things that will get a clap from this audience are wild. <laughs> wild. You guys are out of control. We could not have predicted it. It's, it's totally fine. But Rad, to a certain extent, though, like staging romances. I feel like that's always been a thing, has it not? Absolutely. It's an old Hollywood institution. I mean, I think we could like even go back to arranged marriages when we talk about staging marriages. But like in yeah. terms of Hollywood, like you think about that opening scene of like singing in the rain where like Donnie Lockwood and Lena Lamont have to fake their romance to promote their movie. Like that was an old Hollywood thing. Sure. Where, you know, you would have public you know, first of all, relationships getting together because it was good for promoting a movie, and you would have publicists calling the, this outlet tabloid up to say Jessica and Roger Rabbit are gonna be at the boom boom room, whatnot. <laughs> like, you know, that's that that's wow. to, to the way the, the, however the game. No, go was off. I, mean, I love it. I love but it. you know, but you know, like this is the stuff that still happens today, yeah. right? The way Taylor Swift and Kim Kardashian staged, yo, paparazzi, be here. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be ready for you, right? Like you're Talking about Taylor Swift and the football guy, like yeah. obviously these are all he has a name. moments. <laughs> like Travis, I mean, something we yeah. don't know. Travis, but, some guy. I, yes. I I do think that's different though. I think it's different uh, when couples let us believe that they are together to promote a movie. Like, um, wow, I'm forgetting their names: Sydney Sweeney and Glenn Powell. Mm. You think that's fake? Yeah, I don't think they were actually together when they were promoting that movie. Which Did that still movie ever come out? It has yeah, not right. come out yet. But I what think I love about they, this is the whole audience was, was like, who? I know, right? Our audience has no I don't idea know who them. those Glenn people Powell are. Glenn Powell will be a star one day, they're, okay? <laughs> anyway. They, he will. Yeah. Um, they're both very blonde and very pretty. She's on uh, Euphoria. Anyway, they let everyone believe that they were a couple to promote this movie. I think that is different right. than these like fake relationships that uh, allegedly that are just for show and then mm-hmm. you know they hold hands for yeah. the cameras and then they go home and they never touch each other i don't know if i necessarily believe in those but i think that people use um their relationships for strategy and they definitely use it for promotion mm-hmm. but i don't know if i believe in the like fully fake romances I don't but know if i think I there's like a, a very like a there's there's a sliding scale of how fake they are and how genuine they are right because i think even the most genuine oh man, I think she's cute and I'm going out with her, there could still be a transactional, let's stage it as well Absolutely. for the purposes of our, right? Like, so I, I, I wouldn't call that fake though. No, no. I think uh, that yeah. that's like with... Okay, all right. Oh, go ahead. No, continue. Go ahead. <laughs> 
right. Wait, how would it not? I mean, like, it sounds fake in the sense that it's performed for an end as opposed to like, oh, I like this person. I want to be with them. But also, I think I just want to just zoom out a little bit more here and just say, this is the investment that I'm talking about. We do this. Like, we mm -hmm. sit around and go, well, what do they have to get out of this? They both have a movie in it together. It feels like they're just in this for the pictures. Like, like, like that's sort of... And to me, that feels sad because I like love. Am I naive? Like, am I... You tell me. Yes. I, Someone I laughed I, at that? <laughs> I'm sorry, you, I you like are, love. I mean, you are naive. You are naive. But Great. so am I, I think. I, okay. I like love as well. Mm -hmm. I think that it is not a bad thing, though, to understand that these people are in an industry where their public personas are their jobs. So no matter right. who they are dating, like Nico mentioned, no matter who Taylor Swift is dating, whether it's Travis Kelsey, that's his name, or anyone else... <laughs> Um, it is going to be a transaction. She is going to have Tree Payne, her publicist, involved in their relationship. So I don't think that's necessarily fake. I think that's just smart business. And I love to throw shots at Taylor on this podcast. You've you probably do. Heard you've me done do it, it every episode you've been on. Yep. But you cannot deny that she is a really smart, savvy business person. And so what I think that she does, which people might call fake and orchestrated and conniving or whatever, but I just think it's smart, is that she plants these like public images so that she can then write a song and reference it without actually talking about it. Right? So a... a Power couple, if they say out loud, <laughs> if they say out loud every detail of their relationship, we're going to say that's tacky. We're going to say that's so weird. Mad right we're going to say, why are you talking <laughs> about so your relationship? Mad right now. But if you're Taylor Swift and we know that she dated Jake Gyllenhaal because of one photo and she's wearing a scarf and then she writes a song where I left my scarf at, her, at his sister Maggie Gyllenhaal's house and we all can picture the scarf because of that one paparazzi photo that is just really smart and so now we've seen her in the box with Travis Kelsey's mom she's gonna write a song about how she like left her red socks in the box <laughs> with Travis Kelsey's mom it's brilliant it's brilliant I, uh, for those listening at home, I'm livid on stage right now. And, and the reason that I'm having such, I am a, complimenting her. such a strong reaction, just before we move on to the next topic, just real quick, there's a really good tweet that said, look, if Taylor Swift goes for a walk, y'all are going to say it's PR for the air industry. And that's what it feels like. <laughs> now she's not living her life trying to write scenes for her next song. She's just no, living her life, right? I like, think she is just living her life. Yeah. That is my point. I think she is strategic about what she shows the public. I think her and Travis Kelsey are having like fun intimate times with each other behind closed doors. Wow. But I think, do you I wanna, do. Do you want to spend more time on that? Just uh, kind of. Kind <laughs> of, someone actually. Was like, oh, all right. I think they Go are. Off. <laughs> but I think what she shows us publicly is strategic, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I am still livid. My name is Elamine <laughs> Abdul Mahmoud, and you're listening to this very special edition of Commotion. <laughs> hey! With a raucous and very wrong audience right here at Buddies of Bad Times Theater. We got culture writers, Rad Tom and Pillay, Nico Stratus, Kathleen newman -Bermang. Um, Listen, can I just play you guys a song real quick? The, I love the range of reactions to the song of the panel. Rad is like, what is this music? It was made after 2002. And Kathleen's like, what a banger. That is Ariana Grande. <laughs> the name of the song is Break Up With Your Girlfriend, I'm Bored. I'm, the reason I'm starting with it is because I'm a cheeky guy. That's why. I'm a cheeky guy. Uh, it has been a year of celebrity breakups. Ariana Grande is going through a divorce. She's also maybe dating her wicked co-star. Maybe ended up breaking that marriage. Kathleen is giving me the shady look right now. Uh, there, there's this story. I hate this story. I really do. But Ariana Grande sort of has become the poster child of the year divorces. I want to talk about when everyone is paying attention to your every tiny little move, Nico. What becomes at stake for these couples in terms of when they get together, when they break up, when they maybe cheat on each other? Because it feels uncomfortable that we're all voyeurs and participants in this. 
but also it feels like we can't stop. I mean, there's a whole industry dedicated to this. I mean, there is all these cottage industries built under famous people's relationships. And it's interesting, like you're talking about the Ariana Grande thing, but I'm, I immediately think of the Kevin Costner divorce, your boy, Kevin Costner from your- Kevin Costner is also your, getting divorced. Yes. Your favorite television show, Yellowstone. Yellowstone, shout uh, out Yellowstone. Shout out to Yellowstone, the yeah. show that wow. nobody in Wow, anti-Yellowstone room, I see <laughs> you. <laughs> but. Don't think I don't see you. I see you. But, You're but all they, correct. But they did this thing when they were splitting up where they were like, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna keep it private. We're going to keep it you know, out of the public eye or whatever. And then they immediately did not do that and started dragging each other in public and we're getting headlines and they're posting on Instagram even though they're in their 60s. And, like, and yeah. it's just, it became a whole thing. And it is this thing for people to watch that and dissect. The judgment from Nico is like, you're all grown. You could do better than this. Look, I'm 40 and I'm like, I shouldn't be on the internet anymore. I should be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> um... But uh, I'm, I'm 41, actually, so I should really not be on the internet. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, there is this thing of, like, it is, it is a really hard thing to play out in public, and you have to be very careful about how this goes, right? Because it can spiral out of control, and it can, much like, like, you're talking about the Taylor Swift thing, like, planting photos and whatever. Like, people are strategic about the way they're captured in public, but these things become messy so quickly. We've seen this time and time again, and when it becomes messy, it becomes a fire, and what does fire do? But it rages out of control if nobody does anything about it. And even then, you probably can't put it back in. We're watching this right now with Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner, right? Of like, yeah. mm -hmm. and it is it is shades of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, and we saw how that played out. Part of it, I blame on the lack of proper like cultural criticism and proper media and proper places for people to have conversations about this beyond clickbait and like easy headlines and all of that stuff. So most people are sort of formulating their opinions online really quickly, and they're not necessarily stopping and thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a cottage industry, right? Netflix made a, like a four part mini series about a couple's divorce. And like, and that it becomes messy and it damages people. And it doesn't just damage famous people. Sorry, I'm going long on this. But I, like, I think about this a lot because I think it starts to damage people in your real life. Mm. This is when it starts to filter down because people start to talk about these things, right? People, especially with the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp thing, people started talking about why they supported one side or the other. And yeah. if your friends are in an abusive situation or if they're trying to get out of something and they see you talking about Amber Heard and they see you talking bad about her, they don't feel safe anymore about their own situation. <laughs> This is like, with the celebrity couple thing being like a sponge that you can put so much on, the divorce thing or the slit up thing, I worry about the real life implications of because that's where I feel like it can trickle down into people's lives. Uh, Kathleen, I think like the mention of the Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner story has made a lot of people uncomfortable this year. And maybe we'll go out on this. This is sort of be the last question here. But the discomfort has been that it's playing out in really ugly ways in the press. You know, um, it seems like publicists for both sides are sort of trying to paint the other parent as an ineffectual partner. I would say in this particular case, Joe Jonas is much more the villain. Mm -hmm. um, and Sophie Turner has been... in. Taylor Swift also factors into this because she's a part yeah. of that story. What? She's everywhere. What do you want me to do? <laughs> but, but what do you think the dangers are of playing out a divorce so publicly? I mean, I think Nico just touched on a lot of them. I think that, you know, this is why I love analyzing celebrity culture so much, right? It seems really frivolous, like we're up here talking about celebrity power couples and divorces. But I do think the danger is that there's always going to be a side and there's always going to be a narrative that they push. We saw that with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. We're seeing that with Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas. And yeah. with that narrative, it was that Sophie is a bad mom because she was out partying. Yeah. Sophie is a bad mom because she was working. Like, like, that's a very damaging narrative to be out there. That's very sexist. What I will say, and I think that people are a little bit more media savvy now than they used to be. So I think that a lot of people saw right through that. Yeah. Um, and they saw that Joe Jonas's camp was, like, planting these stories. And so as much as it's frustrating that it even becomes a discourse, and it is also kind of gross that we're talking about people's personal life in the context of a discourse, but I also think that it shows that we are becoming a little bit more media savvy when it comes to celebrities because of, you know, a Laney Gossip, a Perez Hilton, even mm -hmm. Dumois, which I, I really don't like. But I think that we understand a little bit more that there are these different sides, that there are narratives that they're pushing. So it can be dangerous, but I do have a little bit of hope that we are parsing through that and understanding that these narratives are a little bit bigger than just two celebrities breaking up. A word. That's Thanks. no, that was beautiful. I think that's also, I'm like, there is nothing further. That was a beautiful way to leave it. This is a special edition of Commotion. We're recording this live at Buddies and Bad Times Theater in Toronto. 
Y'all, listen, it is Thanksgiving weekend. Before I go, I'd just love to get your recommendations for what I should spend some time with. Brad, kick us off. What should I do? I think you need to either catch up or start winding down with Reservation Dogs. You know, Woo! that series. It's in its third and final season. Um, you know, I, I got to see it through the end because it already aired out in the U.S. And, it, you know, like this beautiful show about indigenous teens in Oklahoma, as so many of you know. And, you know, if the first couple seasons has been about like elders guiding these young teens through healing as they, you know, deal with intergenerational trauma and whatnot, this final season has been about these young teens through all their nonsense, helping their elders, helping their aunties and uncles heal. And it's mm. been this beautiful full circle journey. So if you're not caught up to that, get caught up on that. It's so beautiful. I, uh, I'm going to pause my daily Geely rewatches. Geely from 2003. You guys know the movie. <laughs> In order to catch up with the reservation dogs. Nico, you have brought us a song. Yep. Let's just play some of it. Black wolf is running out through the tree. I love that Nico's like, live crowd, let's play some autumnal vibes, let's go. What, what song did you bring? Well, I b- brought a song by Margot Price. I had a sadder song queued up and I was told, no. A sad- <laughs> <laughs> and I, That is actually true. Like, Nico, that's too sad. You in retrospect, I agree. I'm from the Yukon originally, and for me, fall is an afternoon in between uh, the, uh, the morning of summer and the rest of winter. Uh, <laughs> and for me, fall is really about, like, you're hunkering down, you're making soup, you're, you're storing canned goods, you're doing all this. And my mom would bake a lot. And I think about the music my mom, like, and Margot Price is a country musician, if, if people don't know. And she has a new record coming out called Strays 2. That's a song from Strays 2, her new album. And uh, it really sort of reminds me of this feeling of, like, fall is this time to sort of pull back, to stay inside, to bake, and to prepare, and to, to prepare to be cold for an extremely long time. And music like that just sort of puts me in that mindset. I don't view it as sad. I just view it as, like, intentionally slowing down because everything is a lot all the time. Uh, can I interest you in another artist who made two autumnal albums, Folklore and Evermore? <laughs> Massive album. Does she ever date some guy? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got to talk about it. Kathleen, take us home. Who what are your you recommendations? I don't um, know, honestly, but I'm grateful. <laughs> okay, I usually bring really highbrow recommendations like teen dramas, like <laughs> The Summer I Turned Pretty. Yes. And, uh, but now I'm going to go real low into the gutter of reality TV, and I have picked... Naked Attraction. Ooh. This is... Oh, hey, we got Hang some on. Naked Attraction Hang on, the knows what fans. this is, but I don't, and I'm upset about that. What is okay. it? Okay, this is a dating show where the picker, as they call it, chooses who they want to date based solely on their genitalia. Uh, so just their naked bodies. I beg bodies. your pardon? No, I swear. So they, they start... <laughs> How does this work? They what? start with like a screen covering them except for the waist down. And so the episode that I saw, the picker was looking at a bunch of dicks and she <laughs> was deciding who she wanted to date and eliminated a guy because he reminded her of her father. <laughs> <laughs> this is real. This is a British show that has now come to the U.S. and Canada. It's very controversial. People are very upset about it. The executive producer had to defend it by saying, you know what, there's a bunch of different naked bodies. And I actually think he used the word empowering. I wouldn't go that far, but I actually (laughs) think it is really interesting to see all these different bodies, these different body types, just normal people, buck naked. um, And yeah, and watching them date and be assessed on their, their parts. Thanksgiving content for the whole family. <laughs> Give it up once again for Kathleen Newman from Bang, Nico Stratus, and Rad Simon Play. You guys are the best. Thank you. Rad Simon Play is a film critic with CBC and CTV. Kathleen Newman Bermang is deputy director at Refiner 29 and Bothered. Nico Stratus is a culture writer and podcaster. Her podcast is called Blue Eyes Crying by the Chips. It's so good. I was on it. Don't only listen to my episode. That would be rude for me to say. <laughs> and that is it for the podcast today. But listen, before I go, let's go. Before I go, I just want to say a big thank you to the staff right here at Buddies and Bad Times. Thank you to Pop the North. Congratulations on your first year. Shout out to this beautiful live audience, except for when I disagreed with you. That's fine. You've all been wonderful. Remember, you can listen to Commotion anytime, wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Alameen Abdul-Mahmoud. I'm going to be here tomorrow. I'll see you then.